Okay, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell. It's me, Lady Ada, me and Mr. Lady Ada, Phil, here at the Ada Food Factory. Factory is quiet, show and tell time. We're here for the next half an hour. We're going to listen to what makers and hackers and crafters in the community are up to this week. We're here for the next, like, again, 25 minutes. We're getting out of here at 7.55. We're going to start with some Adafruit peeps, and then we're going to go to other people in the community. We have some space so more people can join in if you're watching this live and you're like, I kind of want to show this thing. Go uh, to uh, the Hangouts page, and you can join up. So let's start with Noah and Pedro, and then JP. Hey, what's up, everybody? We got some cool crafty projects today. Yeah, so uh, first up was a little mini project for this week's Time Ops Tuesday. It is an animated logo. It's the Hackaday logo. So we're using all cardboard, using the foldable, customizable design that Noah did. You're using chipboard. I'm using cardboard. There's <laughs> so a difference. There's technical. Yeah, there's a difference. We're working on a whole wow. guide that'll explain. It's a paperweight fight. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yes. My, my chipboard's better than your cardboard. It's 30 yeah. point chipboard. Uh, you can kind of oh, boy. Yeah, this is technical. It's like brother versus brother. double flu. <laughs> Double-sided <laughs> cardboard. Right, so you can cut this with uh, your hands or, or by hand, or you can use a, a little uh, cutting machine that we use. And it is all um, you know just layered up together. So we're using the layers to hold the servo in the back, just continuous servo using make code. And all it does is just animate the Hackaday logo. So you can go counterclockwise, clockwise, and then just hold down the A button to turn it off. Oop, button. Yeah. There we go. Of course, you can use all of the onboard sensors, like light sensor or temperature or anything else to control this. Of course, you can get all of the templates and the designs to modify and design your own enclosure for all of your papercraft projects. But that was just a mini project. Noah also has today. Yeah, so, so we wanted to come up with a cardboard type project as well. So we made a little cardboard box. It houses a battery, uh, the circuit player on Express, <laughs> and a servo, which is mounted in between all these little pieces. Uh, but the cool thing about the pieces is that we made a little paper template. So folks can actually, oh, no, it's blown out. I can't see it, but there's that. Yeah. <laughs> I see it. Yeah, I see you it. can kind of see it. Uh, yeah, so there's pieces that you can print on a regular sheet of paper. It's an 8 by 11 sheet of paper. You can just cut this out and uh, sort of stencil it on top of your cardboard. Um, so what she does is just simple servo movements. This is like a little Blinka that's in a box. It's just kind of moving her head. Um, so you could use make code to do all sorts of different things. You can activate it with the buttons. You can activate it with uh, sound, uh, with light. You could shake it as well. Um, I don't have those set up here, but it's it's fairly easy to do so in make code. Uh, so we talked about that in uh, in in this morning to, today. Yeah, and <laughs> that happened today. We we talked about it on today's show, which we did in the morning. Um, so if you guys want to download the templates and print them out yourselves, you can have at it. You have two choices. Minor pages. <laughs> I like the They're cardboard. I like how it fits together. That's really uh, yeah, it's, it's not like it's very it's durable. Like a laser cut thing, but uh, you know, hand cut. You could do it by hand. Yeah. You could do it by hand. Totally. Yeah. I did it by hand. Okay. So, okay. Sweet. Right. We'll be playing some of these videos and more. Yay! Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. JP. All right, JP. Hey guys, let me get set up here because I want to show you my project that I just put out a guide on. This was my tightrope unicycle bot. So there we have our good friend Ada Bot, and I've got a Cricut and Circuit Playground Express and a little battery pack. I've also got a speaker on the back, and it's kind of loud, so I'm going to turn it on now and flip the switch on the Cricut. And if I can find it, where are you? There you are. Whee! Ooh, yeah. Yeah. It's going to go a little uphill so I can slow it down. There's not a lot of traction. And there it goes on the way back. Yeah. All right, sweet. Nice so this is guide up if you want to learn how to build that, and it's uh, a lot of fun because this is a, a pretty cool type of little animatronic effect that you can do um, with the leg here, a couple of joints that we make using cardboard, uh, and then I dressed it up with this cool uh, paper craft version of Adabot that the Ruiz brothers created, so we're very excited about that. Um, and if you want a little preview of what's up tomorrow on my live yes, stream. Preview, preview, preview. Yes, we do. OK, so I've, I've stripped this of some of its uh, more identifying features. But uh, what I have here is uh, all cardboard construction, plus some sticks and glue, of a uh, cam follower. So what you'll see is I have a little cam on a shaft here that's going to turn as I turn this big drum, also made of cardboard. And that's going to move this follower up and down based on the pattern of that cam. We can do different things if we use different types of cams and sizes and shapes. Uh, you can also change the type of follower you have. 
And we're going to use this to do a type of automata. This big drum is going to be used to gear down one of our uh, gear motors. So if you want to learn all that fun stuff, please tune in tomorrow. I'll be um, putting that together and then doing a guide on that later. So that's uh, 4 o'clock Eastern time for the live stream. All right. Thank sweet. you so much, JP. All right. Next up, Tigniak. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. All right. So this week, I actually have a couple things. We've been working more with the laser. And somebody sent me a business card and said, hey, can you laser cut this? So we did. <gasps> and this is uh, just MDF. <clears throat> and you can actually uh, take a photo of anything. I used a PDF scanner on my phone and upload it as a, P as a PDF, and it will etch it out. So we sell these now. If you go over to my website, I'll put a link in the stream later. But uh, you can actually upload any design. We'll cut it for you and then mail it out to you. So this was another one we did. That's cool. And then a local coffee shop wanted a uh, card for people to connect to their Wi-Fi. So this is a QR code where you scan it and it sends you to their Ooh, Wi-Fi. Handy. And then I was testing out the Glowforge laser cutter I have has a uh, 3D etching mode. So it can actually, based off of the color, etch some stuff higher and lower than other stuff. So we made, if you can see it, oh, yeah. uh, one sec, let me uh, screen share. We made the Adafruit logo. I did this cool kind of code background. And we made it into a little block like that. Ooh, neat. So my next idea is I want to get rid of this black background and then um, make a giant version of it. So it'll take less time because there's no black on the back. Uh -huh. And then uh, send it out to you guys. Oh, well, thank you. Mount it on your wall or something. All right. And you have those um, show and tell assets. I think I emailed them to you. So yeah, you, you sent those to me. I'll, I can do those as well if you want. Well, you should etch one for yourself and make a scene yeah, on I'll, it. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do that one. And I can, send, I can send stuff out to anybody if they want. OK. Right so there will be a link in the Discord if you want any of that. All, All right. right. Sweet. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah. Thanks so much. OK, next up, Christopher. Sure. How's it going, Christopher? I'm great. How are you guys? Hey. So um, I was cleaning up. You may recognize. Ooh, a Raspberry Pi. Oh, oh. Do you remember the um, LED backpack? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So at Python programming, my challenge was to make a tic-tac-toe program using just uh, one button, a lighted button. So I have some splash screens go in there, and okay. then you click to start. Ooh, that's a nice animation different players. This is the random player. He just makes random moves. Uh, push the button to advance the cursor, hold it down. Oh, Worked yeah. out there were mm -hmm. two colors and then the third color for the background. All right. Neat. And then... Uh, Yay! Red one. Up. So that's it. All right. Nice Outstanding. Work. Well, um, the sticker is larger than that the, the, the LED itself, but um, email supported Adafruit Dot com and we'll send you out an S scene on the show and tell sticker. It'll fit on the breadboard or something. I would love one. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, Christopher. Okay. Next up, in at six. Hello. Hey guys, how you doing? Yeah. Hey. So uh, two weeks, uh, like two weeks ago, I demoed the uh, uh, my temperature sensor uh, working over ham radio. Um, so uh, this week, I actually wanted to uh, open uh, some of the APIs and show off some of the architecture uh, for the software side and then allow anyone with a sensor to be able to uh, to uh, publish or post to. So let me just share my screen. And uh, I got just a few slides real quick. I'm going to run through them real quick, but then I'll, I'm going to do a demo real quick. So um, the architecture uh, is actually pretty sophisticated. It's, it's grown over time, um, you know, as we're trying, as I'm trying to uh, intelligently Honor and analyze the Earth's resources here. Um, so uh, <clears throat> the, it's in, broken up into three layers. Sorry, uh, it's broken up into three layers. So the first layer is this data layer, and right now I got everything. Everything in green is working in refactor mode, I guess we could call it, and then everything in white I'm working on as we speak. Uh, so everything's going into NoSQL. I got Elasticsearch indexing it. Uh, sensors that have media can use the uh, send actual media. Uh, using the block store. I got several third-party APIs in this enterprise service bus going on. 
uh, relational database, mostly for like API keys and configs. And then right now, why I'm opening it is because I'm working on the graph, the Neo4j GraphQL database. So I'm trying to get relationships, and it's tough to do with only one or two sensors. So um, <clears throat> then what I did was, uh, over the last couple of weeks, I uh, created some Lambda services. I got Amazon Machine Learning working, uh, Wolfram Alpha, uh, so I can actually show Wolfram Alpha app working, and some different cloud machines that I built. And right now, I'm working on IOTA uh, for cryptocurrency micropayments and IBM Watson. So all these things are being integrated into what I call the intelligence layer, which is the next layer up. And then the third layer is the interface layer. So I got MQTT going, um, working on GraphQL and simple notification for like push notifications, stuff like that. And it's software developers kit, WebSockets. And then I'm gonna expose uh, three services today on the REST API. So, uh, and then uh, all those, that's it. And then all the sensors will communicate with the interface layer. So anyone who's got a sensor can start sending in sensor data. So how it looks is the first one that I'm gonna uh, do is um, first everything like big data needs like a really true worldwide unique identifier. So I chose the Twitter Snowflake uh, unique identifier uh, platform uh, to do that. And I created an API service for it. And you can generate your own Snowflake for your sensors or machine or whatever, where if it's a group of uh, sensor data. Um, and then I, I'm gonna expose this uh, Snowflake read so this just basically decodes the snowflake, which gives you the timestamp. I also uh, giving it an epoch as well. And then the random bits, which is part of the snowflake technology that Twitter open sourced. Um, and then the actual snowflake itself, which is what you would use for your machine identifier. Um, and then, uh, and then <clears throat> the third service is the actual micro data. So being able to send your actual temperature sensor data uh, to the API. Um, so first I'm just, uh, so what I did was I created a Postman collection of the three services and I'm gonna post the bit.ly URL to um, uh, Discord. And uh, also I set up a Slack because a lot of people were pinging me on it and I was missing it on uh, Discord. So I just set up like a Slack workspace. So I'll post both those links. Um, and then uh, so quick, I'll show you, uh, you switch screens real quick. Oh. Here's the Wolfram Cloud application. So right now, uh, as you can see, uh, moving some screens around. Hold on, two seconds. So as you can see, uh, we're getting I'm getting the sensor data in about every eight minutes. Uh, everything is coming in UTC uh, with the my snowflake, and I'm just getting the temperature and humidity, um, and uh, and then I'm converting the timestamp right here in Wolfram Alpha. So it's a Wolfram Alpha Cloud app uh, that's reading from the data bin, which is one of the um, uh, third-party APIs, obviously, that we're communicating with. I did not get the, uh, uh, what do you call it working, I guess, uh, time the uh, time uh, time shift for the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Anyway, so um, with that, daylight savings time, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Okay, so All right, well, I'm going to show off Postman real quick. Oh, so it looks really cool. Can you, can you come by next week and, and show the rest off so you can get to some other people? Yep. Yep. Because I'm like, this is this is intense, and I'm I'm absorbing it. But I, I like how you're using like every service. All the services. It's all the services. All right. All right. Please come back sensor, next. And it sensor the earth, sensor the dot earth, right? That's cool. Got a custom URL. All right, come back next week. I want to hear more about this. Um, but let's go to Isaac. I have to get an Earth the sized show and tell sticker. Hey, what's Hello. up? Uh, I could actually use some temperature sensors and such because I got a update with my composter. Little. Uh, rig here. Whoa. So I've never really built things with wood before, but I figured out how to do it this week. It was quite trial and error. Um, it's not perfect, but it's working. So um, I'll give you a little demo here, but uh, let's see how this goes. I wanted to do this outside, but my Wi-Fi was being faulty. So we're going to have a compost bin inside. Right. Something, something might go wrong. This is usually the beginning. What's the worst thing that could possibly the, happen? Compost bin inside is usually the beginning of a story. <laughs> That there's wheels okay, on gotta it. Move. Well, that's so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's wheels okay. on it. So gonna... Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah, rotating. Rotating. Yeah. Okay. That's working. Okay. Okay. Good. 
So I, I don't know what you could tell from that visual. Yeah, very effective demo, very it effective. It works and I'm not gonna be able to use a motor to turn it unfortunately because it's just, it's gonna need way too much power. And the, uh, I was on the Discord chats and a lot of people were helping me with a lot of different engineering uh, maths and stuff. And uh, so I think I'm, instead I'm gonna incorporate some temperature sensors and a methane sensor so you can kind of know when you should turn it rather than turning it every single day Maybe yeah. you have a notification that says, okay, methane levels are getting too high, so go outside and turn it. It's mm, a good okay. idea. Yeah, it's yeah. actually like a bicycle front wheel and just yeah. like pedal, pedal, pedal. And pedal that's, stuff you can, that's stuff you can definitely solar power and stuff, but a motor, yeah, yeah it's going to be it's gonna be so big and heavy. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, All right. Nice update. We're going to wrap up. With, oh, we, if you want a sticker for the compost thing. I would love one. Okay. It's <laughs> awarded. <laughs> okay. This compost is We're going to wrap up with Scott, and then okay. we're going to set up for asking and Jerry. Scott, how's it going? Hello, uh, I saw there was room, so I thought I'd jump in. Um, I randomly, uh, as people may know, I'm working on CircuitPython in a Game Boy. This is an actual Game Boy. I got it uh, recording the addresses that it's uh, reading from the actual Game Boy CPU. Super cool, but I haven't gotten anything really demo worthy. Um, but in that vein, I, I, I have been thinking a lot about, of, uh, and Lamora has been thinking about this as well, uh, handhelds for the future. And I I thought I would just show <laughs> uh, this handheld off. It's not an old console. It's one that you could just buy off eBay. It's called the Retro FC Mini, Mini FC or something. Um, and so I just thought I'd I, I took the screws out. Um, and I find looking. Oh, we lost your mic. Oh, no. Which is very mysterious. Uh, this I put I put the shell on the space bar and it muted me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I think low cost electronics are really interesting. So uh, I enjoyed taking this apart. One thing wow, is one it's single sided. Jeez. Thing. Cheap. And then if I take it out, um, the other th interesting part about it is well, one this is a three inch screen, which is an oddball size. Yeah. Uh, but then if you look underneath. The big blob there is where the CPU is that does basically everything. Yeah, the other and then the flash. Yeah, and then the other yeah. chip is just flash. Um, and the thing is, you can't really tell what is running it because it's actually like in like in the epoxy, um, because they put the actual silicon wafer, I think, right on it and then bond straight to it. What's neat is it's a custom silicon. You can tell because they got it so. You know, they can put the pins wherever, so they made it so that when they bond it on, the wire, the lines, the address lines of the flash or the RAM, right. like, don't have to go on the second layer. Like, this was, a lot of engineering went into making this this cheap. Right, which is fascinating. And then you have the, like, buttons where it's just elastomer buttons. And we've been talking about that a little bit. Um, yeah, those are cool. I won't tip it up anymore because they go everywhere. No, this, this is, <laughs> every project I've done, it's like, and then they go, and like, they just bounce away. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, so I thought I'd show that off. Um, really interesting to see how they're put together. Um, I guess I could show just in comparison. Let me. I'll take the cartridge out, and this is what yeah. a Game Boy Pocket has. You can see Nintendo also did one big chip, which has both the CPU and the video pixel yeah. processing unit and everything in there as well. But you can tell um, how much more expensive it is. Just like the the quality is like intense there look all the chips and all the components and it's like packed yeah, in they, they even put their name on the board yeah and uh the original game boy the dmg is actually two boards which is also interesting mm. whereas this is one um yeah that's my hobby time right now okay right. your hobby is putting python your on hobby is, is, is putting python on the opposite side yeah. of electronics <laughs> yeah i was i was actually having issues with the soldering on this other board and so i that got me thinking i really need to finish my Python powered reflow oven as well. Okay, well, never it never ends. All right. Nope. Okay. Well, that's the show until everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much. We're here every Wednesday, 7 30 p.m. Thank you for taking out. Scott, no, Pedro, JP, Isaac, and in at six. Uh, Ask an engineer starts in a few minutes. See some of y'all next week? Yeah, see you next week. We're gonna get ready for the next show. Good projects, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye. <sighs> mm -hmm.